uh, to speak with you all uh, th this evening. Um, I very much appreciated um, our relationship with City of Lane uh, and thankful for uh, Rema Omosu, who is uh, here this evening. Uh, who uh, made the introduction. Uh, we've been engaging with you all for a little bit over a year now. Uh, so very grateful to be back on uh, again, this go around in this application cycle uh, to tell you a little bit more about the Darden School of Business. Great, great. So uh, looking through your profile, Kristen, it's, uh, it shows that you've uh, basically you had your bachelor's and master's at University of Virginia. So how does that feel like uh, having that there then also working there afterwards? So how, how's that going? How, how's that experience like for you? Yes, thank you. I am what they call a, uh, a triple who. So a Wahoo is a nickname for those folks who graduate from the University of Virginia. So I've done uh, my bachelor's, my master's, and I'm on the tail end of earning me earning my PhD right now. Nice. And uh, it's collectively uh, given me uh, over 12 years in Charlottesville. Uh, so happy to speak to you all more about uh, our location in Charlottesville. It's it being a college town and a wonderful place to, to live and learn, but also uh, a widespread experience across the university. Uh, while we are, uh, will specific, specifically speak about the Darden School of Business, uh, the University of Virginia has 12 other academic schools and a, a wide variety of research centers and co-curricular opportunities available to our students. Uh, and I often have to remind our Darden students that those resources um, are there for them to leverage uh, as well. Uh, so I can speak beyond the school and, and the services and support that the university is able to offer as well. Great, great, great. So definitely with 12 years in there, you are definitely the man to meet if uh, and when I want to come on uh, what I call a vacation or just a tour of the school. Fantastic. So uh, I think with about time, let's begin now. So good everyone. I uh, hope we're all having a fantastic uh, day ahead. Whatever time zone we're in, um, I hope it's either day, evening, morning, Hope we're all having a good one. So um, just to run us through the, like say the rules of this course, right? First of all, um, kindly keep your mics on mute. So you come and help us mute your um, microphone so that we can hear the uh, speakers uh, and having their session. Uh, we'll be taking question and answers at the end. So uh, for now, as it comes to you, you can easily just type it up in the chat box. So we'll be waiting for that. Please uh, be respectful and supportive in your, um, in your dialogue on the chat box. Uh, feel free to turn your cameras on if that's what you would like. Um, but then again, also, if you're having any network connectivity issues at any point, you could also turn them um, off so that it would uh, streamline better. And also attendance form links will be posted um, in the chat box. So kindly just uh, keep an eye out so you can fill that in. Um, it gives you an opportunity to not just experience lane, uh, the life in lane, but also opens you up to um, other offers from our different partners uh, within the lane and network. Great. So I will run you through just uh, an introduction to the lane network, basically, giving you a brief history or a background to us at lane. So lane is a platform, right, where we leverage the power of community to open you up to the world of possible suitable MBA programs that will help you achieve your most honorable dream. We are diligent to follow you through your program, ensuring that you maximize the opportunities around you. Pretty much why it started off as a bunch of people who decided, you know what, the application process can be quite uh, intriguing and it would be help and it would be rather nice if we could have a bunch of us who come together and walk each other, uh, literally handhold each other through the process. Uh, we offer various um, programs, we offer various, how will I put it now, will I say, yeah, we offer various programs within the year that could help you, whether it's a GRE, GMAT, you know, give some prep and guidance uh, so you can know what to do and how to go about doing them. Great. So um, for our MBA for Africa webinars, uh, totally we have over 10 plus schools represented. It's running from August to November. So also as you type in your, um, your email into the attendance list, you will get emails from us later on that will help you out with um, joining, up, joining up with the Lane, um, Lane community. And that we were able to give you access to more uh, more resources as you go along your MBA journey. Um, starts by 8 p.m. almost every other Saturday, so you can almost be sure that if you check in here every other Saturday, you will be able to um, join in on our session. Um, we have a YouTube channel that's um, that's uh, City of Lane, yes, City of Lane. So um, the links will be posted in the chat box as I mentioned earlier. So just kindly click on that and uh, join in. You'll be you have access to a vibrant online community with lots of free resources which are always helpful as you go along your um, mb application 
Great. So uh, in our history of over two years, we've had uh, we've hosted about 13 MBA different different MBA programs, and um, we have gotten our members into um, most of our members rather have gotten to over 20 of these schools that that are posted right in front of you. So therefore, it's quite the um, interesting program to be in. I implore you to kindly do your best to follow up uh, with the applicant with the attendance process sign up on it, put your number or rather your email on the attendance sheet, we'll reach out to you via email and we'll follow up till you get in and then hopefully we can guide you on your way to the MBA program. Great. Okay, so our speakers for today are from uh, Darden School of Business, University of Virginia. We have Christian West, who is the Senior Director of Admission, Global Diversity, Equity and uh, Inclusion. A brief um, brief uh, background to um, Christian, and uh, this is from even information he just told us right now. He's been in Virginia for over 12 years, um, Scooney, so therefore, if you have any intent of going there, which I advise you to go, Christian is your go-to man. He would show you the best spots to have the best meals <laughs> from what well, that's that's first of all for me, because as a man, I like to eat. <laughs> so he's going to show us the perfect places while we school, of course, to get good meals. Uh yeah. So uh, brief history into Christian. Christian is senior director of global diversity, equity, and inclusion recruiting. He oversees diversity pipelines for the full-time residential MBA program. In this role, Christian collaborates across the Darden Enterprise, focused on diverse populations and leverages partnership with the Consortium for Graduate Study in Management, CGSM, Management Leadership for Tomorrow, and Rumba. Prior to Darden, Christian served as the Assistant Director for Undergraduate Admission at UVA's McIntyre School of Commerce and Assistant Dean for Outreach at UVA's Office of Undergraduate Admission. Christian is originally from Washington, D.C., and re received his bachelor's and master's from the University of Virginia. He's currently a PhD candidate in higher education at UVA School of Education and Human Development. Um, yeah, and now we have also Kende Abiodun online. Hi, Kende, glad to connect. Hello there. So uh, Kende is a full-time MBA um, candidate at uh, University of Darden, sorry, at Darden School of Business. Um, he's the VP of Admissions for Darden African Business Organization. Great, so nice to meet you, Christian and Kende. So um, I will just take down my screen so you could um, follow up uh, and help us out with uh, um, or rather your presentation. Just on a different aspect of things, you'll be glad to know that Kendi also has a background um, in investment banking where he interned at Evercore. So therefore, um, for those of us who have questions on how, uh, will I call it the place to just kind of go around and help us out with that. Um, I'm sure Kenny can give us a tip or two. Right, the uh, thought processes. Great. So, um, Christian, I hand over to you. All right. Thank you very much. So, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here to get us started. Uh, we have about a, a 10 to 15 minute presentation to get through and then, then we'll take questions. Uh, Kenny, as I go along here, I will kick it over to you to talk a little bit about your experience because I think this conversation will help us frame uh, the Darden experience very well. Yeah, um, so, so, so thank you for, for, for joining me uh, this afternoon. Um, well, so what do we mean when we say Darden? Uh, that's a question that we asked uh, a bunch of our students this past year as a part of our uh, assessment and satisfaction survey. And picture here on the on the first slide uh, is Alexis Orr, one of uh, Kitty and, and Rayma's classmates. And in and, and that question that we asked uh, our students, what do we mean when we say Darden? Um, Alexis responded, the community at Darden is like bringing a little piece of home along with me on this MBA journey. The bonds I built throughout last summer into the fall of the first year are what have made me feel seen, valued, loved, supported every step of the way. And Alexis's response is something that I, I hope encapsulates what we seek to do at, at the Darden School of Business. Um, of course, we are going to provide you a rigorous academic curriculum to prepare you for whatever you'd like to do post MBA or even 10 years afterwards. Um, of course, we have an amazing community of students and Charlottesville is a wonderful place to live. Uh, but I think as you meet all of these different business schools, you'll have to start to understand the nuances and the culture of the school 
And I think Alexis's response really encapsulates what we hope the culture will be for each and every student at Darden, that they feel seen, valued, uh, and supported every step of the way. Uh, so as um, Alumi Day uh, mentioned, my name is Christian West. Uh, I serve as one of the senior directors of admission. Uh, in addition to that wonderful introduction, I oversee all of our diversity, equity, and inclusion recruiting at Darden, which includes uh, supporting all of our global recruitment initiatives. Um, I do have a director of global recruitment who reports to me, uh, and she leads all of our engagement opportunities uh, with international students uh, or students who are coming to us from outside of the US. Uh, so very glad to be here with you all today. Uh, in support of that effort. And I'll tell you all a little bit about our metrics for this incoming first year class um, as we go along here. Um, and the way that I'd like to frame the conversation today is talking about Darden's mission, uh, which is imp to improve the world by developing responsible leaders through unparalleled transformational learning perspectives. And we have a four pillared philosophy that we call Darden differentiators that I think will help explain how that it, uh, mission uh, is, is enacted uh, throughout our academic program. So here we go. Uh, first, one thing you have to know about Darden is our spontaneous let deliver, yet deliberate learning experience. Um, Darden is a general management program and has that approach to the way that we teach business. Uh, we find it important for students to gain an integrated perspective on the fundamentals of business. And we primarily do this through the case method of instruction. Uh, so, so Darden would, when we're looking at the top 15 business programs, Darden would be one of two schools which uh, primarily teaches through the case method. Within the case method, we uh, structure our students into small sections of 60 to 70 students where the case method allows students to immerse themselves in a rigorous learning experience that steadies themselves in the face of the imperfect information. Uh, if you've never uh, experienced the case method before, you're uh, given a description of a, of a business problem, do a case that mirrors a real life situation. You don't have all of the information available to you uh, to make, help you make a decision. So you really have to evaluate uh, different aspects of the problem to arrive at a decision. So this replicates real world decision making uh, that you would be doing as a business leader post MBA. And also it allows our students to not only learn from our talented faculty members, but also from each other through highly intentional and engaging discussions. Uh, it allows faculty members to really be intentional uh, about how they engage students in the classroom. Uh, so what we call cold calls uh, where a faculty member just points at you in the, in the room and says, hey, what do you think, um, are quite frequent to ensure that all of our students um, are engaging in the discussions and contributing uh, to their, uh, contributing their perspectives. Um, in the first year, students will analyze over 500 real life business cases across all of the learn learning modules. And in that first year curriculum, those learning modules will range from marketing to finance, accounting to organizational behavior, leadership communication and decision analysis. Uh, also the case method really helps uh, focus our students on collaboration and teamwork, which are hallmarks of the Darden experience. Uh, within the first year core experience, you'll work along, alongside five to six other students uh, across the first year sections, which we call uh, learning teams. Uh, and working in a learning team really allows our students the opportunity to build strong, deep relationships with other members of their class, sharpen their leadership and communication skills. Um, and then also that's a, a resource of support in terms of analyzing the cases and effectively managing the workload. So before I move on, Kenny, uh, you just wrapped up this first year. You're now in your second year and are taking advantage of all of those elective courses, but uh, offer a, re a reflection for us on your first year section and what it was like adopting yourself to the case method of instruction. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Christian. Um, I'll say my first year at Darden was, was a wonderful experience. Um, this is not me just missing out words, but I think um, going into my internship and coming into second year, um, seeing the person that I am in terms of my growth process, I will say I've learned extremely well. Um, and I'll say compared, like, like from my experience coming into Darden, I was a quite confident guy and coming into the case study method where you'd have to prepare for each and every case per course. 
in a very small short period of time, I'll say that would develop your reading skills one. And the fact that you're going to be called, called amongst like a group of 70 other students. And by the way, I was um, dadding does something called sections. So they take about 350 students and break them into um, five sections. So I was in section A, um, which you call them the lions. And you, you are in the midst of highly intellectual people. And when the code call, you don't want to be the guy that will be like, oh, sorry, I didn't read my case. You want to be also at par with your fellow students. So um, I'll say it gives you a lot of like confidence. And going into the internship, there were several times where um, I was in meetings with clients and even, even fellow, um, and my fellow colleagues. And you just have, you, you realize guys from other schools not to diss them. They were a lot more muted compared to myself, where I was very much open to share my ideas. And this, this definitely, I can highly attribute it to like the case study method where I'm always prepared to be cold called. I'm always prepared to share my ideas. Now coming into second year, I'll say my first two weeks of, of uh, adding, I was, I was a bit reticent in the, in the sense that when people are sharing their ideas, I'm still kind of thinking, oh, should I give my contribution? But coming into the third week, I was very much free of sharing my opinion. And in second year, like, it's, it, whatever I think of, I'm just willing to share with everyone. And I'll say that that's the benefit of what, what the case study does and what Darden has done to me so far in terms of uh, my academic life, in terms of my professional life, and even my social life as well. It's, it's been a, a very wonderful experience overall. Awesome. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah. All right. So let's turn turn to our, our faculty who facilitate all, all the aspects uh, of the case method. Um, the uh, central to the case method is our talented, renowned, and award winning faculty. Um, Darden professors are global thought leaders in their respective disciplines and fields. But one key aspect is, in addition to maintaining uh, an aspect of uh, of research, uh, they are truly committed to our, our students' growth and development where teaching is a high priority for, for all faculty members and a critical part of Darden's culture. Um, so much so that our faculty have been ranked number one by both the Princeton Review and Financial Times multiple years in a row for the top MBA academic experience. Uh, so here are a couple of faculty members that you should expect to meet at Darden. Um, Sara Saras Fathi is a leading scho scholar on the cognitive basis uh, for high performance entrepreneurship. So if you are an entrepreneur or want to learn more about this area in an academic setting, Saras would be a great resource for you. Um, she's the creator of in a concept called effectuation, um, a widely acclaimed, rigorous framework for understanding the creation and growth of new organizations and markets. Um, in the MBA program, SARS teaches courses on entrepreneurial thinking and starting new ventures. Um, if you ever heard of something called stakeholder theory, uh, then you may have heard uh, Professor Ed Friedman. Uh, he is well known for uh, the origins of st stakeholder theory and suggesting businesses build their strategy around their relationships with key stakeholders. Um, his work has led over to uh, 100 volumes and 200 articles in the, in the areas of stakeholder management, bu business strategy, and ethics. Uh, in the MBA program, Ed is a course head for the first year business ethics curriculum and also teaches philosophy of business. Um, I will add that we are one of the first MBA programs to require ethics as a part of our core curriculum and uh, sustaining the focus on ethical leadership as a part of our experience here at Darden, uh, Ed has been a, a key component to that. Um, and then lastly, uh, Peter Bellamy, one of our newer faculty members, uh, he teaches a very popular first year MBA elective called Pass to Power. And he's been recognized with many acc accolades for his dedication to our students. Um, in 2018, he was named by Poets and Quants as one of the 40 best professors under 40. Uh, and in 2020, he received a faculty diversity award for his exceptional contributions to diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, within Darden. Uh, and Peter is, is one of the favorites uh, amongst our students, particularly with that pass uh, to power course. So these are faculty members that you could expect um, to meet uh, th throughout your time at Darden. Uh, Kenny, I'll, I'll turn back to you. Has there been a, a particular fa faculty member that has been impactful to your experience at Darden or maybe even reflect on that faculty team that you had uh, in the first year? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, out, out of the three, quite the three on the slide, um, definitely I was I, I, I was on I was in ethics class with Ed Freeman, stakeholder theory, amazing guy. Like, fine, he looks like a like Albert Einstein, but he's really funny as well. As well, he's an amazing professor. He knows his stuff really well, and that's what you you kind of get from dad in himself. But I'll say one of the professors that also stood out to me because I love finance was um. Mark Lipson, an amazing professor, he teaches of finance and he really distills the concept of finance to you. And even things, even if you've done CFA, you've done all those things, like the, he brings in a new level of insight and energy that you be like, you think you 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 have you go into your thoughts and you be like, wow, I didn't actually know that existed. But and that's that's the kind of value you get from these professors. Like also Peter Peter Bellamy taught me in my first year in in our dad in as well amazing professor like um christian says is, is a favorite of, of of most of um um of, of of most of the students and he's an amazing guy you can meet him and share anything literally anything like you know there are times you'll be maybe scared of like speaking to some professors maybe because of their age and but peter bellamy is a guy you let him know anything like he he has your back almost every time or rather all the time um, but uh, aside from that, I would say all of the professors overall are, are very, very much approachable. Like they are, they are willing and excited to, to see you around. I, I was speaking to Elena, one of our professors in finance the other day, and she's, she was just telling me on how excited she was seeing the students back. Like they are really, really willing to, to help you in whatever way, way you want. I know um, Luan and um, Peter Bellamy, they also host students in their, in their house. Uh, to come have brunch and just chill and have conversation and from time to time other professors as well just invite students hey come to my apartment i'm cooking this i'd like to host like six people you know interesting stuff like that just to ensure that everyone collaborates together and they just drive value through that as well thank you kenny uh then or uh abu can uh Will you all offer a reflection on this first year core curriculum that you're currently experiencing and your interactions with faculty? Sorry, come again. Sorry. Uh, I was asking uh, if, if Fane and uh, oh, yeah, Fane, Fane, right. wanted to jump in here. <laughs> okay. Um, sure, I'm happy to. Hi, everybody. My name is Fane. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. Currently in my first year, and I just finished, or we just finished week five of classes. So yay us! Um, <laughs> as um, you know, Kendi has said, it's been such a ride. Um, the experience with faculty, as he was speaking, I was just remembering like Peter is an absolute rock star. Um, I sit in Peter's classes for Elo, um, leading organizations, and he's so amazing. Um, and, you know, speaking on the branches, just last Sunday, I was at Luan's house. Um, we had the um, annual section A brunch um, at her place, which was really good. Um, and Mark has already sent an invite for his annual Friendsgiving that we're going to have in about um, the first week in November. So it just makes you really um, wholesome. It's such a wholesome community. Like you're coming um, far away from home, but you just realize that everybody is available and everybody is willing to help. And you have like this tremendous faculty who are like renowned in their field, but also uh, extending their hands to you to make you feel like this is a community that you belong to. So it's really, really great. Um, I can add to that. Hi, everyone. My name is Iwa Kuhn. I am uh, also a first year student at um, Darden, class of 2024, section D. Um, for me, my experience so far has been really amazing. Um, I can tell you that who I was about a month ago or two months ago is not who I am today. Um, there are three things that have really like um, stood out for me in my darting experience. And the first is student leadership. I just I just really when you come into darting, you see that the school is led by the students. And, you know, with that way, you're able to grow. You're able to connect with your peers and you're also able to um, to influence decision making and darting, influence change and basically support, you know, the growth of everyone collectively at darting. Um, I would say also like the diversity in my class, my section, 
it's totally amazing. Um, I love the classroom experience. It makes you energized to think. It really gives you like real life the real life perspective of like the business world, right? So when you go out into like, you know, your workplace, your career industry, you're able to think quickly on your feet and you're also able to think um, widely as well. Not just like thinking like in a narrow um, perspective. And I'll say like the third thing is also career. Um, that I never knew a lot about things like PE, you know, that's private equity, or like even tech, which I had interest in, there's just so much like um, opportunities for you to learn about different clubs, different um, industries, so much information that, you know, these clubs, you know, put in their time to developing. So really, like dieting is amazing. And yeah, looking forward to, you know, sharing more about my dieting experience. Thank you. Thank you all. And, and to weave in aspects of the application to Darden, uh, you're, you all are hearing about the, a, lot of, a lot about the academic curriculum right now. And because we have that general management approach tied with that case method of instruction, one of the things that we're really trying to assess both in your application to Darden, but also in your interview is ways that you can contribute to that. Uh, so as we're reviewing your resume and your job history or having conversations with you about your professional experience, through the interview, we want to get a good understanding of what perspectives you might bring to your class and through the, through the case method, or that you are intellectually curious about all of these different modules that you'll experience in the first year. As long as we feel confident in that assessment, uh, as, a, as among all of the other factors uh, that contribute to our admissions decision, uh, we can move forward with a successful offer there. So let's transition uh, to career. Uh, right now, because what do our students do with all of this learning? They have to apply it uh, in the real world as, as business leaders. Uh, and I definitely want to talk about um, our wonderful career outcomes that you all can see here and the amazing team that supports our students uh, through it. So we take this rigorous, uh, well-rounded academic experience um, and, and our Darden students apply that uh, through both their, their internships between summer and the first and second year and then their full-time job opportunities. And companies feel so confident in the experience that we offer our students here at Darden that sometimes our students come to us uh, with internship offers in hand even before they've stepped foot in the classroom. Uh, the numbers here are reflected of the, of the cl class of 2021. We just released preliminary numbers from the class of 2022, and we're expecting the full report uh, later in October. But for the most, uh, for the class of 2021, Darden had the highest average starting salary and bonus among U.S. MBA programs. Both of those numbers are the highest in school history. Um, Darden is also privileged to have our graduates work across the U.S. and abroad. For the class of 2021, they now call home 73 different cities, 28 U.S. states, and six different countries. Uh, the top hiring companies for Darden uh, are McKinsey, Bain, and the Boston Consulting Group and the consulting industry, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, and the tech space, Barclays, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs, and finance. If you want to see a complete list with some additional numbers, uh, you will see on our career services webpage what we call a first destinations report. It's about a 50, 50 page report that details uh, all of these numbers by industry and has a more comprehensive listing of, of employers. Uh, none of these outcomes would be possible without the work of our talented career coaches. Uh, so through our Career Development Center, we have a, a 10-person coaching team that works exclusively with our full-time MBA students, and they're organized by industry. Uh, so if you're interested in consulting, you'll work most closely with Christy Gunville, uh, or if you're interested in finance, depending on what area, you'll work most closely with Ed Yu, um, or uh, uh, why am I blinking on, on his name? <laughs> Kenny can help me out. He's in the finance area. He's a reader. Um, or, or yes, he? yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're interested in tech, you'll work closely with, with Jenny Zinner. Um, I'll also add that we, has a, we have a career coach who supports um, all of our international students um, and is keen on uh, the companies that are uh, willing to sponsor students. Um, or uh, if you're interested in working abroad, there's some additional support there. Uh, so, so Kenny, I, I know you spent your summer with Evercore, um, and if Rayma is willing to jump in here, I know she spent her summer with Microsoft. 
Um, what was recruiting like for you all last fall with these specific companies and what resources did you all find incredibly beneficial, whether from the Career Development Center or our industry clubs at Dart? Yeah, absolutely. I can I can jump in first. So luckily, I, I recruited early and um, I would say part of the process of recruiting early was that didn't have a structure on how you can ensure that your early recruiting will be successful. And what did they do? Very early on, um, they apprised us of the different opportunities that are available to students for early recruiting. So right from January, you start getting information from your current students that, hey, um, if, you're, if you need any kind of support in terms of your early recruiting, just reach out to me. Definitely, like most times, depending on um, when you're sure if you're coming to Darden or not. But another thing they did was to start telling us about the opportunities, the materials you could start using to prepare for Shari, because I was going through the investment banking track. So the finance club, they reached out to me, like personally, one of the finance club president literally had calls with me on a regular basis and he mocked me personally. Now he's in Lazard, he's doing amazing. And part of the things, he also linked me up with another second year, another first year that was always um, prepping me for interviews, asking me, looking at my CVs. And this was as early as February, like recruiting started for early recruiting in June. So they were already like giving me tips and giving me information on how I can excel. And coming into, and also the events I could also join to be able to bring myself out and be open to these opportunities as well. Like for example, the Twigo, the Jumpstart program. So they gave me all of these resources and they gave me the opportunity to go, go ahead, study on my own. And they also gave me um, mock interviews to do. When it was close to my interviews, they also organized different mock sessions with me and I was successful in the whole process. So. I'll say the career center as well. I spoke to Edu and he advised me on when, when the offers came. And he gave me very good advice if I should accept or um, advice on accepting or deciding to wait and recruit again in the fall for more opportunities. So they are very, very much helpful right from the get go once you get your um, dating admission um, um, offer. They'll start working with you in ensuring that your recruiting process is successful from the get go. Yes. Um, okay, so just before I jump in, I would like to popcorn it over to Faye um, and maybe Ibukun as well, because they are first years and they just went through early recruit um, recruitment. So maybe Faye can actually speak on that before I come back to my summer experience. Um, yeah, um, thanks for that, Rima. So um, as Kenny just said, like before coming into school, I um, started doing my recruiting. I was um, sure I wanted to do consulting, um, just wasn't sure like what the process was. Like I was very gray on what the process was. And I found like Darden to be so supportive. First, special shout out to like the African um, business club, Dabo. Um, the consulting guys, the second years um, at Dabo really like handheld us through the entire process, like had several um, sessions with us to let us know what it was about, um, sent us several materials to prepare with, and they were so helpful. Um, then there was also the consulting club that paired us with like second year mentors to do multiple case preps with. Then there was the um, Darjean Career Center, Christy Gonville, um, who, you know, went through my resume so many times, had behavioral prep sessions with me, had case prep sessions with me. So like the support was from every corner and from like months ahead, I think my interviews were in June, July and from as early as March, um, I started getting like so many materials on how to prepare for these interviews, who to talk to, um, so many case prep sessions. And it was such that before my first day of class, I already had like multiple offers. Um, when the offers came in as well, um, I had to look for who to discuss with, to know what to select. And they were also very helpful. Christy um, was, you know, just always a calling me to be like, um, I'm thinking about this. This, I'm trying to, I like this firm. I feel connected with this firm, but I feel like these people are better positioned to give me what I'm looking for. And she's like, okay, let's think about it this way. And she never like got tired of answering my questions um, to the point where I eventually signed an offer. Um, so yeah, I feel like 
um, super, super useful. And all of these were done before my first day of classes. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. Ibuku, you're, you're, there's something. There's something, there's something. <laughs> okay, can you okay, hear me? Can you hear me now? No, no. If you're using earphones, you should probably take it out. Okay, okay. I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Yeah. Here. Here. No, no. I think I can go. Um so just to echo some of the things Kennedy has mentioned and also Fanny as well, um, I recruited early, similar to them as well. I recruited over the summer, but I would say the first thing that I did and the level of support I got from Darden was the moment I got my offer and I was already telling everyone that I really wanted to do, um, I really wanted to recruit for tech. Um, I already started getting recommendations of, hey, speak to this person at this company, speak to this person at this company. So like, I think I said December, January, I probably spoke to already at like 10 people at Dar um, Darden alumni who were either at Microsoft, Amazon, or Google. And literally everyone was sort of telling me, this is what you should think about. This is how we should think about, because I felt like even if you know where you want to go, sometimes your role can differ, right? So you might want to be able to like sort of streamline what type of roles you want. So Darden alumni were able to help me with that as well. And they kept referring me to one another. So they're like, hey, I think your, your role would actually be a good fit for this person's team. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't for them to be able to give you a job, but for you to better understand the industry, the company, and some of the like um, skill set that you actually need to be successful in those roles. So I really got that. I think probably early last year before I even got my visa, I thought about, hey, how do I get to the US? And then the second aspect was um, over the summer or early over the summer, actually, we already started getting like list of events to actually join. Um, so early career events that tech club and also like um, also like um, Jenny Zena was sending us like Microsoft, Amazon events, join this event, sign up for this and everything. It sort of gives you a sense of what exactly is going on. What are some of the trends that are changing in some of these companies every year? And you get that very, very early on. And I would say the third aspect for me that really, really like changed everything was also the fact that over the summer, I had calls with um, Jenny Zena, who is like the tech recruiter, right? Um, so she reviewed my resume and she was like, hey, we've already narrowed down all of this. These are certain questions you should start preparing for, like if you're going to be recruiting early. And she also did it in a way that she set expectations as well. She was like, sometimes some early recruitments are for like consortium students, but shoot your shots very early. Um, and that really gives you an opportunity to say, hey, I've already tried very early. I've already, I already have some of my stories and some of those things because I saw that it wasn't everyone that got early offers, but everyone was well prepared before school came, like before school started for recruitment. So even if you didn't get the early offers and you tried, you already have your stories, you already know, literally you already know everything, all your behaviorals. And that saved a lot of people a lot of time as well. When you think about how, rigorous your first year or like your Q1 and your Q2 is. So I feel like there's a lot of support. And, and just to mention that I got enough, like enough support from my Dabo, like um, I think it was Chukudi. Yes, I, ha I had Chuck as well. Um, he was really cool. He was very helpful, reviewed my resume over the summer as well. It's just like, hey, these are companies that you should be thinking about. So I think like you get a sense of that um, community. And I think Kendi and I, um, even as second years, we've actually been able to pull a lot of our weights and give back to the community that, uh, that as well. And Kendi's twin is actually the president of Finance Club. So I know that they did so much for investment banking recruitment um, over the summer. So we already have um, folks who are like Africans that already have um, early offers from investment banking companies as well. Yes, th th thank you all. I, I think this is a, a huge reflection on the level of support that both the Career Development Center and our industry clubs are able to offer our students, but also that extended Darden uh, uh, network. Uh, you all talked about the influence of, uh, of alumni as a part of this process as well. And to relate this to, the, to Darden's application, there is a specific short answer question where we ask you about your short-term and long-term career goal. And our intention there is to get you to start reflecting on what your expectations are for both these internships and post-MBA opportunities. The earlier you start reflecting on 
what your transferable skills are for what you hope to do post MBA. Uh, the more that you're able to refine your search process and identify certain companies of interest or positions that you'd like to, to work for, the easier it is once you start interacting with our career development coaches, our alumni, for them to support you in, in that effort. Um, it's, uh, we use all of that information that you provide us as a part of your application to help plan um, and assess, do we have the resources that our students are interested in uh, to, to effectively support them? Um, for example, there's a growing interest in healthcare right now uh, among our students. And uh, we reflected on that and talked critically about what our engagement looks like with certain companies, our course offerings, and then also the different pathways to healthcare related companies that we have here at Darden. So when you're thinking about how to respond to that specific application question, uh, give us a good idea of what you're thinking there because that helps us and, and effectively support you uh, throughout both your, your intern uh, ship and, and full-time search. So let's uh, jump to uh, the Darden community. Uh, now, uh, which is my favorite topic uh, to talk about. So after courses and recruiting are done, there's really never a dull moment at Darden. Every day is different. Uh, you have heard uh, our students talk a little bit about the industry clubs, uh, but there's also uh, 60 other uh, clubs and organizations at Darden, whether it's our affinity clubs like our Darden African Business Organization, Davo, um, interest clubs like the running club or the basketball club. Uh, we even have a club where uh, the wine and cuisine club where all they really do is just like get buses to take our students out uh, to the different wineries outside of Charlottesville. So there's really something for, for everyone uh, there. Um, and then we also have a lot of wonderful traditions at Darden. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, called cold call, uh, which happens, uh, this is different from the cold call that happens in the classroom. Uh, but on Thursdays, our students uh, have a happy hour uh, to celebrate the end of classes for the week and different student organizations sponsor the, the cold call. So for me, it's a wonderful way to just relax um, and see our students in a, in a different uh, setting. Um, and uh, cap off, off the week. Um, in addition to cold call, we have frequent celebrations to highlight the many communities that we have here at Darden. Uh, for example, uh, Double last year held this uh, wonderful um, Afri uh, Business in Africa conference that was week long that featured a fashion show and an Afrobeats party, but also some amazing uh, speakers uh, to talk about their experience as business leaders. Um, so uh, I'll start with Fane. Um, as you've connected and uh, over the past five weeks since you've been here, as you've connected with the Darden community, what has been one of the highlights for you? Huh, I'm not sure I can pick one um, particular experience to say is the highlight because like everything is indeed like truly awesome. I was just putting the chat that code call is the best way to, you know, end the week and like, Cold call is the perfect segue into TNDC. And then you have like your Friday where you're just trying to catch up and then Saturday comes and you realize that, oh my goodness, I have to start reading my kisses for the next week. And <laughs> it all just goes on that way. Um, but I think that like, if I'm to pick one thing um, that really stands out for me with the entire Darden community, it is, the fact that there is such um, potent support and collaboration amongst everybody. So everybody's going through the same thing. Everybody is trying to cram or, or trying to get through like 11 cases every week, um, at least for us first years. Um, so with that, like everybody is willing to support you. Everybody is willing to, you know, work with you through whatever it is that you're going through. Um, and, with that, like you have the clubs that are there. So I have joined like Double, I have joined um, Bringing Goodness in April, I have joined Humans of um, Darden. I was trying to join community consultants as well, but like everybody is just there and you just have like these multiple things that um, bring so much fun to you um, outside of the rigors of the classroom. So um if it's one thing i would say it's actually like the support but i don't think like one experience stands out as the highlights like as this slide says every day is different like one day you're going in and like my favorite day is 
definitely Tuesday because we have just two classes. But then Wednesday comes and you're like, oh my goodness, three classes today. But Thursday comes and you're like, yeah, cold call TNDC. I'm here for this. Let me push the last energy I have and let's just get through the week. So every day indeed brings something different. And, and I, I see we have uh, Ibukun back. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk to the folks about Darting Cup as Rima mentioned here in the chat. I was just about to mention that. I was like, I'm like, I'm gonna talk about that in couple, okay? Because, you know, it's, it's the perfect way for sections to um, tighten their bond, to learn more about each other, for you to represent your section and participate um, collectively to win um, titles for your section. Um, I'm in section D, the best. And yesterday we did cricket. Um, a few weeks ago, I was literally doing running up the stairs and jumping ladders. Um, so basically the Darden Cup is like um, sections competing to win like a league, right? From like the whole quarter. So like there are different weeks and there are different games and sections just play. So last week, I think we had section C win, but you know, this week we're, we're coming closer. Um, but yeah, I really love Darden Cup. Um, it's a fun way for sections to interact with each other out of the classroom, get to know each other. Also to see that we're all working together um, for like, you know, the same purpose, which is to win. Um, so yeah, I really love Darting Cup. Another, another um, community that I really love is the Graduate Women in Business. Um, I love the fact that they paired us with amazing women in Darden who are so willing to share, you know, their time with us and um, basically like share value and um, touch, touch, on, touch, on, touch base with different um, parts of our lives, like recruiting, like classroom, like it could even be self-care, like, oh, how are you taking care of yourself this weekend, really? It's not just about careers and class or academics, so you know, doing like first coffee, first coffee is like, you know, after our first class, um, we have like a 30 minutes break for us to basically do anything we want to do. First coffee, I had um, my GWIB mentor, which is the graduate women in business, really just connect with me and say, hey, how's it going? How's classes? What do you need me to, you know, help you with? Do you need advice or anything? It's just amazing, really. And um, really grateful to the Darden community for always giving back in so many ways. Go section D. Awesome, thank you all. And, and to turn this uh, to, to our application, you'll see that there is a short answer question that asks you about uh, community here at Darden. Uh, I think the question reads along the lines of, if you could introduce yourself to, to your classmates uh, and include something that is not on your resume, what would you include and why? And our intention here is to really, to get you think about bringing your whole self uh, to, to the Darden experience. I often remind pers pr prospective students that uh, when you're applying to business schools, it's not a job interview. Uh, while we very much care about your professional experiences and preparations, we care a lot about who you are as a person and your passions and your interests because those will all be reflected in the activities that you engage in uh, as a part of the Darden community. Whether it's joining one of our clubs and organizations or competing in Darden Cup or even just the relationships that you build um, with, with your classmates, uh, all of that is, is critical to um, a holistic Darden experience and, and something that we're, we're very proud of. All right, so I've got a couple of more slides here uh, for, for, us, uh, for us as a team, and then uh, we will wrap up and, and take questions. So get those questions ready. Um, a little bit about our, our wonderful class, um, and this has just been updated to reflect our, our incoming first year class, Bain and Ibukun's class. Um, so I want to give you all a good idea of, of what that looks like um, on an average year here at Darden. Um, our target class size for the full-time program is 350 students, and we hit that right on the head with this uh, new first year class where there are 348 members there. Uh, typically, we have around 40% of the class women, 20% uh, uh, U.S. minority, uh, but one thing I want to highlight about this class, it, it, it is the highest number of international students that we have ever had at Darden, and that's something that we're really proud of. Um, specific to, to Lane, we doubled the number of students who come to us from countries in Africa, and I really have to acknowledge the student leadership of Davo, who were very critical to, to that success, uh, and I look forward to increasing that number uh, with the class that we're recruiting right now. 
Um, as it relates to the application, you'll also see that there are some numbers uh, about academic competitiveness there. Uh, so the average undergraduate GPA is a 3.5, whether you attended an institution that was on a 10 point scale or 100 point scale, we're looking for like 85 percentile there um, as an as a average range in terms of your academic performance. And then the average GMAT is a, is, uh, was around a 720 for this year's class. That is the highest average we've ever had at Darden. Uh, so we're very proud of, of that as well. And then for the GRE, we're looking at uh, 160 on each section um, as an average score. I'll add not reflected there is another test uh, that we accept for the full-time program, the executive assessment. Uh, and typically the average score there is around uh, 152. So a diversity of experiences and perspectives as a part of our class, but I think this will give you all some baseline as to the students who uh, you would expect it to, you should expect to join um, as a part of uh, Darden's class each year. All right, before we wrap up, let's talk about Charlottesville uh, because I know that was a, a new location for you all. Um, while I have called it home for the past eight years, um, it is uh, a new location for the overwhelming majority of our Darden students. One thing that I do love is out of that 350 person class, about 345 of our students are moving to Charlottesville for the first time. And our location really provides an opportunity for our students to uh, start fresh, uh, start a new routine, start new relationships, knowing that uh, the overwhelming majority of your fellow classmates are kind of in that same same context, I think really facilitates strong relationship building um, here at Darden. Charlottesville is a, a serene two hour drive from Washington, DC. It sits right at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which you can see in the photo there on the left. Um, and our students take great advantage of uh, the outdoors by hiking through Shenandoah National Park with the Darden Outdoors Club. I saw that there was a hike that took place this weekend uh, with DOC. Um, Charlottesville is ranked the number three happiest city in America by the National Bureau of Economic Research. And I always describe living in Charlottesville as just very easy. Uh, it's relaxing, it's easy to get to all of the amenities, and I think it's a great place to learn away from all of the distractions of a major city that really facilitates focused on your responsibilities um, at Darden. But when classes are done, you've got over 400 restaurants with innovative cuisine to take advantage of, a thousand plus live music events each year, the East Coast premier wine country, and we have Darden alumni coming back each year and some have chosen to, to stay and make their careers uh, in Charlottesville. And at the top of our conversation, I talked a little bit about how Darden is a part of the larger University of Virginia. Uh, and UVA has uh, 12 other academic schools in addition to Darden. And those resources are available to our students as well. Uh, one little known fact is that you can take classes outside of Darden uh, in other schools, whether it be our law school or medical school or public policy program. So uh, UVA as, at the academic, as, as the academic center of, of Charlottesville uh, is very key. Um, Darden's campus mirrors UVA's historic academical village. You can see the, uh, that on the right, right hand side, uh, which is built in 1817 and recognized as uh, the only uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site in North America. So all of this makes Charlottesville really one of the best places to live in the US, um, according, to, according to cities ranked and rated. So I'll turn to our students here. Uh, Fane, I'll, I'll start with you. What was transitioning to Charlottesville like? Um, <laughs> I remember the first time um, I got into Charlottesville. Um, my plane landed and I was in the Uber from the airport to um, my apartment. And the first thing I thought was, oh my goodness, this is such a green place. Everywhere is so green. <laughs> like, <laughs> And um, initially I felt like, wow, like it's really quiet. I was used to living in big cities. Um, so it's quiet, what's going on? But then I got to realize that the serenity is actually like one of the best things for me because you know you already have like a lot going on with school. Um, but I think my best thing about living in Charlottesville is that it's two things. First, no place is far. Like everywhere is, 
close to you. And then the second thing that, um, which is closely related to the first one is that everything you need is just around you. So you're trying to get food, you're trying to get groceries, you want to see a movie, you want to go to a bar, you want to do absolutely anything. It is just really around you. Um, I remember when I was coming in, someone told me that um, there were very, because of how small the community is, that there are very few Uber drivers that you would almost start getting to know your Uber drivers if you entered, <laughs> if you use Uber a lot. And I realized that there was a particular weekend where I went out on a Saturday, the Uber that picked me up when I was returning, picked me up in the evening. And on Sunday morning, I was going out and it was the same guy. I'm like, okay, third time is a charm. We actually have to, you know, start having a conversation now. So everybody is so warm and welcoming. It's a really um, picturesque neighborhood as well. Like if you're trying to get into this, um, if you're trying to get really great pictures, um, you're trying to go for serenity, you're trying to go for comfort, you're trying to go for convenience, everything is like, packed into one really cute place that has everything that you possibly need. So um, I know that like right now, the first impression I had was, oh my goodness, of rather, oh my goodness, this is a green place as um, being overshadowed by, oh my goodness, this is actually a good place to live in. So yeah, I really do enjoy this place. And uh, Ibukun, do you have a, a favorite restaurant in Charlottesville yet? Well, I don't have a favorite yet, looking to build that soon, uh, but I visited a couple of vineyards and wineries, um, the Jefferson Vineyards. We also visited a vineyard for, I think, a McKinsey event um, a few weeks back, and I was really amazed by like the scenery. It's just so beautiful. Um, other things that I'm looking forward to doing more in Charlottesville is actually hiking. Um, yeah, hiking the Shenandoah National Park. I haven't been yet, but I'm actually looking forward to doing that soon. Um, I really love the fact that like while in Charlottesville, while it's peaceful, you can also build like an active social life with like your peers and your friends. So yeah, um, also looking to visit the Fralin Museum of Art. I've heard so much about it and I can't wait to go. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you all. All right, uh, last two slides before we wrap up. Um, Want to talk quickly about applying to Darden. Um, this year, uh, we have uh, four application cycles for, for folks who are interested in applying. Uh, the first of which uh, recently passed our, our early action round. Um, and we're uh, looking forward to, to round one coming up here in the next few weeks. Um, Questions about differences between the rounds. Um, early action is a bit different. Uh, it is the only round uh, where uh, we have open interviews. Uh, the rest of the rounds will be by invite only. So we do a pre-screen of your application, then we invite you to an interview. If you're applying for under early action, you are guaranteed that interview opportunity. Um, also early action has both a non-binding and binding option. Uh, so with binding, uh, you're telling us that Darden is your top choice and that if you were admitted, you would withdraw your applications to all other business schools. That non-binding option works just like the rest of the rounds. You, you're not committing uh, to Darden at all. Uh, which round should you apply? Uh, great question. I always tell folks, apply in a round where you, could, where you feel like you can best put forth uh, your application. Uh, we have uh, robust uh, applications in each round. Round two, in fact, is when we get the majority of our applications uh, here at Darden. So apply when you, when you can put forth your, your best application uh, for us to evaluate. Um, also, uh, great questions about application fee waivers. Uh, for all uh, uh, folks who uh, have a citizenship with a country in Africa and are currently living there, we automatically provide an application fee waiver. Uh, there's nothing you need to do to earn that fee waiver. Um, in the background of the application, if you put your residence um, as a country in Africa, it automatically applies the fee waiver for you. Uh, so we can take care of that. There are also several different partnerships that we have um, here at Darden that facilitate a fee waiver. Um, the African Leaders Academy is one of them. Uh, so if you find yourself um, being an, an affiliate of one of those many programs like Forte uh, MBA Launch, um, you can also qualify for a fee, wa fee waiver that way. Lastly, uh, we do have uh, a test waiver process here at Darden. 
Uh, so if you um, have not set for a standardized test like the GRE or the GMAT, and you wanna see if there's an opportunity for, for you to submit your application without us uh, not taking into account those standardized tests, we do have a test waiver process. Uh, what that involves is uh, you submitting a, a pre-application where we review your resume and your transcript. We also ask you some specific questions about your quantitative preparation, uh, since that is what we usually use the standardized test for to assess your quantitative preparation. Uh, if we feel like there's enough demonstration uh, of academic preparation for those key areas, we can waive uh, the standardized test as a part of you submitting your application. Uh, and then lastly, what are ways that you can continue to engage with us? Uh, we have many different virtual engagement opportunities, uh, mock classes with faculty members. We have an office hour series where we feature our faculty research. Uh, my team, the admissions committee, is also facilitating application workshops uh, where uh, we talk about different components of the application and provide you specific advice. Uh, and then we also have uh, coffee chats with different affinity groups. Uh, Ibu Kuhn talked about uh, the Graduate Women in Business Organization, and they have several uh, ones coming up. Uh, you can also meet with uh, members of the admissions committee. Uh, we have virtual coffee chats that occur weekly. Those are small, uh, intimate uh, coffee chats limited to 15 people, uh, facilitated by a member of the admissions committee like myself. Uh, so those are a great way to just get uh, preliminary questions answered. But if you have some really nuanced questions that are specific to you, um, I also offer one-on-one -on -one MBA conversations, 30 minutes where we can just chat one-on-one. -on -one. Gives me the opportunity to get you a little, get to know you a little bit better, uh, but also to ask your questions in a one-on-one um, -on -one context. There's also a wealth of other resources uh, available to you all as prospective students to learn more about Darden, whether it's the Discover Darden admissions blog. Uh, if you like listen, listening to podcasts, uh, you'll see the Experience Darden podcast there. And then also we have some student volunteers who have uh, opened up their time uh, to support you all in the form of, of our student ambassadors and you can reach out to them as a resource as well. Um, my contact information is down there at the bottom of the slide. So I welcome any and all uh, questions that folks may have that we might be able to uh, not, that we may not be able to answer uh, during the remaining time we have here. Uh, but want to thank you all for your engagement thus far and want to thank our students for being here um, on, a, on a weekend afternoon. Uh, and with that, I will stop sharing and I think we are ready for questions. All right, I see some roll. Yeah, in. great. It's been, it's been a very awesome session. Um, thank you to all our uh, to everyone really who spoke i mean we've, we've gotten quite a bit of uh understanding first things for me that i've picked up number one you close on thursdays uh, drinks after so that's excellent love it love that that's good energy right there um apart from that also jollof rice we're winning championships we're good we're good <laughs> so and then of course the um, primary from what i've gathered here with um top on community community is quite key and um, you know, there's a lot of guidance involved and that's really helpful. So I'm sure we're going to get a lot of, um, uh, what I say, we're going to get a lot of requests, people looking into that. Yes, so um, so questions on it. We have a question from uh, Tracia David. She's asking about um, for the test score waivers, right? Is it possible to update those scores? So after getting a test waiver, is it possible to update that? Uh, how, how does that process work exactly? Do we? Do we get to update it afterwards? Sorry. Yeah, so so I'll answer that in uh, in, in two different ways. Um, if, if you qualified for the test waiver, let's say we've you've submitted that pre-application that I described, we've granted you the yeah. test waiver. Um, our system does not allow us to see any of the standardized tests that you, that you submit. Um, so on, on our end, we won't be able to see any, any tests uh, that, that you send in. Now, let's say you've submitted your application uh, and you did not want to, to participate in the test waiver opportunity, but you've since taken a test after you've submitted your application and you want to update your test scores. Uh, typically, two weeks after the deadline, uh, we can accommodate those additional test scores. That's when we're in the beginning stages of the evaluation process. And uh, those new scores can shape our evaluation uh, as we continue. 
after two weeks after two weeks after the deadline, uh, we've typically gone too far into our evaluation process where we can accommodate those scores. So if you get them in within the two weeks after you submit, uh, they should be good to go. Great, great. So two weeks time after you've submitted your um, application, uh, you still have been able to you know update your test scores. Awesome. Uh, hopefully that that solves the. Um, that's all Tereshe's question. Um, I'm seeing another question here. First of all, um, someone is thanking, uh, Pascal, I believe, is thanking um, Olamide for uh, the coffee chat they had a while back. Uh, thank you on that. Apparently, you're guiding him through that. So that's pretty awesome. So yes, I was saying, um, the person asked if there are scholarship opportunities for the MBA. How, how's, the, how's that going? Um, is there some... Yes. Um, so, so when you apply uh, to, to Darden, um, there's a couple of different ways that we support, support you in financing your education here. Uh, the first way would be through our, our merit-based scholarship opportunities. And I'll separate those into two different categories, competitive scholarships and general scholarships. So there are some scholarship opportunities that you can actively apply for when submitting your application. Uh, one of those would be the Batten Scholars Program. Uh, we have the Batten Institute uh, for Entrepreneurship here at Darden. Those scholarships are, are aligned with those folks who um, have an entrepreneurial background or are interested in the entrepreneurship industry, and you can actively apply for those uh, when you apply for admission. Once you submit your application, you're automatically considered for all the other scholarships that we have available here at Darden. Uh, while we're reviewing, we're reviewing, we do have some other competitive scholarships that we as an admissions committee can nominate you for. Uh, scholarships that you may see online that are competitive are called Um, those have specific uh, industries that they're related to. For example, I manage the Breakthrough Scholars Program that is for folks interested in private equity and venture capital. Uh, there are some others as well. Outside of the competitive scholarships, we have general scholarships. Uh, and those can go to any students uh, who are academically competitive and we really want to be a part of the Darden community. And that is where most of our money is dedicated. I will also add that there's a special allocation for students from Africa, uh, where those, the, the, the money, the, I guess the pot of money that we have uh, specifically for that is allocated uh, to, to students from, from countries in the continent. Um, and then lastly, uh, we have a need-based scholarship program as well uh, called Access Darden. Uh, this is a program that you would apply to after you've been admitted. Uh, it is uh, an assessment of your financial need. So you would submit some tax documents uh, to our financial aid office so that they can do their assessment. And there they can award up to $10,000 for each year of the MBA program. Uh, one uh, aspect about that is you can uh, stack that money on top of any merit-based award uh, that you get as well. Um, and then the range of scholarships typically are from $15,000 for each year of the program or $30,000 total, all the way up to full tuition and fees uh, for each year of the MPA program. Great. Great, thank you so much, Christian. Uh, we have a hand up here from Valerie. Um, uh, I think we're, okay, yeah. Valerie, can you kindly speak? Um, you can unmute your mic. Thank you very much. Um, Rundi, and thank you, um, Mark, and um, the team from Darden. It's been an insightful session. I've really learned a lot, and I'm looking forward uh, to such an experience. Um, I just want to ask um, a few questions. Um, the first one is on um, the what are some of the qualities um, you see in students who thrive in the Darden community? I know you, you provide a lot of um, support um, to students. I just want to find out, so um, your ideal um, student in Darden, what does he or she look like? Maybe I'll, I'll turn to our students to, to answer that one. Uh, what are some of the characteristics that you all see in your fellow classmates? I can go on that one. Um, so like, not to sound like a broken record, but 
the one thing you need um, to really thrive in this place is the ability to collaborate effectively with people. The case method of learning is structured such that you can never do it on your own. Like you can't come in and just be like, you're going to crunch your 11 cases every week and you're going to know all the answers to the questions. No matter the background you have, it's, it's created in a way to, you know, push you to learn with others. The entire experience in the classroom is such that you're learning from your classmates, right? Um, so I feel like that is the number one thing um, that you really need to have, like regardless of your background, regardless of your um, professional experience, regardless of your academic qualifications that you're coming with, you have to be able to learn and work with others in order to succeed and thrive here. Like, I feel like that's the one thing for me. Um, happy to hear other thoughts. Yeah, um, I can add to that. So I think for me, it's resilience. Um, just knowing that as you progress in Darden, it's, it's, it's not like it's going to like, you know, get any easier per se, but like you'll become resilient as the days go by. You just see yourself becoming a stronger person. The, so, the support that you get from your community is amazing. You don't feel like you're alone. So yeah, I feel like, you know, as a prospective Darden student, like I would come in with that mindset of I'm forging ahead and I'm going to do it regardless and I'm going to learn new things and I'm open to new challenges and I'm open to learning. So yeah, for me, it's, it's resilience. That's what I would you know, speak to. I'm going to pop it to Dennis to see yeah. what he has to say. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so I think I'm feeling, and we're going to say both things I wanted to say. Um, I think one for me was basically and like it's really like intense at times. I need to learn how to scale through. And I think I just want to call out something Nico mentioned earlier, which is the fact that you need to be open to learning. Like literally, you're going, you're going to be having a lot of conversations and you need to be like open to taking new views and like change your perspective towards things because you will see things you think you're smart, but you see a lot of people say some things like them. Bro, I don't know anything. Like you just need to be open to that um, um, learning, um, changing that um, perspective, basically. So that's something that I, I want to like call out. Uh, yeah, Thank yeah. You. I'd also like to add outside of that, I think the whole dating system um, breeds very intelligent people, even before and after dating, highly intellectual um, cohorts, and also. I think a lot of that students have the grades to work hard. They're very, they work hard, but also they know how to play hard at the same time. So in, in terms of that, they're very, very personable, very nice, very collaborative, willing to work with you, but they're also highly intelligent. Um, and I think a very, very, very huge number of them are very, like, like Dennis said, very much open to learn, learn about you, learn about your culture. So come being yourself pretty much and everyone is pretty much everyone is is willing to accept you i would just like to add to um what everyone has said which has been great i feel like everyone feels like when you come to a school like darden you have to be perfect and what you would see in the classroom is that no one is perfect no one is even expecting you to be perfect professors would tell you this, like when there's no right or wrong answer, I feel like some classes you can have calculations that can be close to, but they would say it's all the thought that counts. So when you get cold called, for example, at Darden, no one expects you. You can be prepared for a cold call for like three weeks and they might not call you, right? <laughs> so, so it doesn't, but the day that you get cold called on, it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect or you must have crammed it. No, no, no. They're, you have to give it to them very raw. Um, and I also feel like when you are come as yourself, um, you understand that you are open to learning and everyone else is actually looking for like towards learning from you. So those cold calls are not meant to be for you to say all the technical languages. We ha actually have a professor that actually like, when you are, when she knows that you use a lot of technical languages, she would tell you that I'm gonna change you by the end of the class. The idea is she wants you to speak like a CEO, a business leader, because business leaders don't go and say, hey, this is the XYZ of the XYZ. No, like the idea is you sound, you use business terms, you communicate very well to everyone around you, which means that, in your classroom or your section, you have that opportunity to be able to influence how everyone learns through you. So I feel like no one expects you to be perfect. In fact, like 
<laughs> the basic things you would actually be surprised um, that actually goes all like the long way. So participation, even when you get cold called on, is like it's just for you, for you to get an opportunity to be able to speak comfortably. Um, when you get into any meeting and they ask you a question that you didn't prepare for, you can actually answer it and still feel good about yourself and what you said. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, really insightful. Thank you. Great, this has been quite phenomenal. Um, I'm looking in the chat box for any further questions, but it seems um, Christian is answering them as they are popping up. So <laughs> I must commend that too. Um, yeah, so looking over, I think we're, we're pretty good. Thank you for the links, Christian. Um, if someone can just drop in the attendance list one more time in the group chat, uh, that will help us all. Um, that aside, uh, we have someone asking if there's a resume template for Darden. Um, would that, Christian, is that going to be available on the uh, website? Is that something we could find on the website? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know where that lives. Uh, for, for our students, is that something that's publicly available or does the Career Development Center release that through CDY? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I guess. Well, um, <laughs> I would advise you have seen the names of our lovely uh, students in the, in the session. Please kindly don't forget to hunt them down on LinkedIn, <laughs> reach out to them, and they are your official um, resume guidelines, to be honest, right? They're already there, so they can easily guide your path. So definitely do do a bit of networking right there. Reach out to them, and I'm sure they'll provide a guideline that we need. Um, yeah, so I think. Uh, as you may know, for the questions, I can't see any. Um, can you remember to join the Lane Discord group uh, so you can get more updates? And um, thank you all. Thank you, Christian. It has been a phenomenal session. Um, we've really learned a lot. Thank you, Kende, Feng, Dennis, Ibuku, and uh, Raima. This has been quite an interesting session. Uh, we've learned a lot. Um, of course, uh, there, um, thank you, Christian. So, yeah, um, I think at this point, we'll just uh, take personal questions uh, directly to the Lane team. Christian, if um, if you want, uh, it, it, it's about that time where we hand over to the other individuals in Lane. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Uh, well, thank you all for the invitation once again. Thoroughly enjoyed engaging with you all. And I also want to thank our students for, for joining uh, on a Saturday. I very much appreciate you all's support. Uh, so enjoy uh, the rest of you all's evening. Bye, everyone. Okay, so um, everyone, please kindly remain in. So now we are, this is the Lean team available. Um, kindly feel free to ask questions to the Lane team. Uh, team members are currently on call now. No, so Olumide, Olumide. Hi. Not, this session is not for Lane team. It's actually for, it's meant to be for Darden students with Lane. So ah, it's yes. for Lane. So everyone that has questions for students, Darden students, this is your opportunity to be able to ask. Um, so Dennis, Ibu Kung Feng would actually be able to ask questions, but it's not for Lane to answer. Ah, okay. Thank you very much, Roma. That, that was actually 